speaking the heart of this Gita. And if you think that so far was Rajvidya, hmm? Rajvidya to actually is coming now. Ekatvena Prithatvena Bahuda Vishwato Mukham. If you have to understand the truth, God, reality, in its completeness, then you have to know Bhagwan's yoga, absolute nature, the one without a second, in which neither I am in the creation nor creation is in me. Yet, when I manifest this creation, and such a creation can only be an appearance as the dream, just as you pervade every creature, every object in the dream, in the same way, Lord pervades everything. Therefore, when you see the world, it is that Lord only with thousands of heads facing everywhere. And service of the people is the service of the Lord of Lords. Or out of this creation, we choose something that reminds us of divinity or God, whether it's the sun, the moon, the uh, space or uh, fire, if nothing else, Matru Devo Bhava, Pitru Devo Bhava, Acharya Devo Bhava, Atiti Devo Bhava. Then where is it that you cannot worship me? In all the different forms also you can worship me. Or to service worshipping the Lord everywhere, seeing the Lord everywhere. Or even considering yourself to be just his humble servant and worshipping him as the Lord of the universe. Or with knowledge and contemplation, turning away all the attention away from the world of objects, emotions and thoughts. Hushing all your perceptions, feelings and thoughts and giving up your identification with the body, mind and intellect when you identify with the subjective self the self alone is the jiva becomes one with the atma it was always one but we understood it to be this body, mind and intellect and therefore lived as the perceiver, feeler, thinker, the ego now, how can it be that in whichever way you worship, with whatever you worship, with all these three distinct methods of worship, and all religious worship will fall under these three distinct methods only. Because I alone am the worship I am alone the instruments or oblations in the worship. I am the one who is giving the blessing in the worship. Everything is from me only. The result of the worship also comes from me, from Yajna. I only am the giver of it. Thus, it's short to point out what was called as Brahma Yajna in the fourth chapter is being elaborate here or when you want to point out that how can everything be the Lord only because that one self alone is appearing in all these different forms and maybe not forget that okay. I am all this. So to point out that I alone am appearing in this world. It was very interesting that when Gurudev sent me to Hong Kong to do prachar, 
after coming from you know, uh, you know India and growing up in India and seeing all the you know festivals that we have, especially the most beautiful festival, especially we used to love it because every day we used to get Modaka to eat. So that festival of Ganesh Chaturthi was something, and especially when you're in Maharashtra and Chennai also, I think both play it, the, it, it's most elaborately done. Went to Hong Kong, you told everybody, now we'll keep Ganesh Ji for, you know, 10 days, okay, not 10 days, we'll keep 5 days, etc. But everybody said, you know, where is time? Where is time? And then all this, I said, okay, nobody wants to do it, I'll alone do it. So I nicely made one clay Ganesha. I kept it in our center. Nobody is coming. So I only took some poha or something like that and mixed it with jaggery. And I only offered it incense with incense, the jaggery and everything I did. And then also the arti, no? Sukhakarta, Dukharta, no? all that arti, all the lamps I lit. Nobody was coming. Then, of course, you know, some some people, elderly people started coming. You know, parents said, okay, come on, we should also go. You know, so like that, you know. They also came and uh, then I decided that, okay, now nobody is coming. Let me do Visarjan quickly only. <laughs> now, the thing is, the carrying that little Ganesha, I got onto the streets. Now, everybody will be looking at me, what I'm carrying. So I nicely covered it with nice with Ganesha. It doesn't get dirty or get, you know, people's evil eye. So I just covered it also. You know? And he's so cute. Everybody just finds him cute. So his evil eye. So I covered him also. Now the thing is, in all these places, it is not free for all. If I put anything in the ocean, an ocean was very nearby. If I put anything in the ocean and somebody sees me doing it, the police will come and catch me. But there were steps that were going there. There was a chain there. I saw nobody is watching. I stepped over the chain, went into the steps. It's the harbor there. Hong Kong is a harbor. So I went there. And of course, you don't throw like we do nowadays. You have to go inside and submerge, you know, immerse the Ganesha. So now it's deep. It's not a, it's not a beach. It's a deep. Uh, harbor. So I was still on the steps and just when I went into the steps and was about to put Ganesha, my leg slipped. My leg slipped. I said, Ganesha, don't take me so quickly. I have to do my Guru's work. <laughs> it's good that you're taking me with you, but you can come back. Purcha was you can come back, but I will not be able to come back. Because if I go with you, yad gatva na nivartante. No? So having gone there, I'm not going to come back. And just when I screamed, and I made sure that nobody was around when I was going into the waters. <laughs> Regretfully also, but as I went into the water, suddenly in my bed, I woke up screaming. <laughs> now when I go there, that Ganesh idol was also me. The fire I worshipped was also me. All the incense and the lamp also was me. All the chanting that I did, the Vedic chanting and the artis I did was also me. I only took Ganesh ji on the road. The road was also me. Gatir Bharta, Prabhu Sakshi. Everything was me only. And the water in which I was drowning also was? When I wake up, all this was me only. And yet, they are not in me, nor I am in them. But when I was seeing the dream, all of this, even though I was seeing this whole beautiful worship, it was only me. To point out this point and many other subtle points which I pointed out yesterday, that these verses are there in which Bhagwan is saying that every 
thing is me alone. Now, if all this is me only, ha ha, what is the proof that you are there everywhere? The proof is that everybody is also worshipping me. But they worship out of some desire. When we want something, we all have to believe, accept that there is some higher power, is it not? And that's why all the religions in the world, all the people going to the temples and places of worship are going for what? With the acceptance that there is an all-powerful, compassionate Lord from whom we can get whatever we want. Only thing is, we don't think that we know he's Sarva Shakti Man, we know he's Kripalu, hmm? but actually we think he's a fool. We don't think he's Sarvagya. We think that that he doesn't know it all. We have to tell him what he has to do for us. Huh? And most of the worship is only that only. Now Bhagwan is to point out this only, that all this worship is me only and I am the one only blessing you every moment with the result, with the rain, the climatic conditions, everything, with His grace, His blessings, everything. Even the fulfillment of your desires are from me only. Yet, when people worship me with desire, the fact that we get the fruits of our actions and how much do we put in and how much do we get. In job, we always think we put a lot and we get very little. But with God, we know we break one coconut of 10 rupees and demand one million. <laughs> and yet we get it. Now don't tell me which temple. <laughs> yeah. You go to a Tamre Pakam temple, Sarveshwara, Gurudev Sankalpa is there. You will get it. Hmm? Look at the villagers are getting it. Why not you? Hmm? So, if you think that you are getting it only shows that there is. Hmm? And yet, out of that infinite we invoke only some petty, paltry desire. And Bhagwan is now in two verses pointing out, one, to give evidence that there is a higher reality, all benevolent, capable, abundant giving. In fact, what is the proof of God? We go on taking away everything from the universe. We put back nothing and yet he goes on giving and we keep on getting. We wonder how much oil we've taken out, still there is oil there. There is exhaust. We fear that one day it will exhaust, but at least now it is not exhausted, no? And if that's exhausted, then suddenly it gives you solar light also. Guru Nanak Sahib says, Denda de le de tak paye juga jugantar khai khai. If somebody says, what's the evidence of this reality which is everywhere because I can't see that one common factor? Or what is the proof that there is an all-benevolent Ishwara? 